look is as big as my head. Oh, that's good stuff. Okay. Hello, welcome back. How are we? And um, today I just wanted to go through. I suppose like I've I've been thinking back on a lot of the stuff I've done while traveling, and kind of the money I've spent on like various different experiences and things and like thinking back what do I actually think was worth the money I mean it's all relative like you know what I find value for money you may not but I wanted to share these experiences anyway just so that if you are going on any trips in any of these countries soon you'll be able to get you know the most bang for your book I'm gonna be letting you guys know you know what's worth it and what's not spilling the tea if you will although this is coffee but here we are these are in no particular order it was just uh, how I remembered them basically one of the big experiences that I did traveling uh, for the first time was a helicopter ride over Manhattan and at the time I think we paid around 200 ish dollars maybe a little bit more for the helicopter ride and um you met down at a pier near wall street and you did all your safety demo and all that kind of stuff gone to the helicopter and you flew kind of along the, like along the coast not coast but along manhattan over the water and um, you know getting to see all the different boroughs and and you know all the different stuff in Manhattan and then you come back the whole thing was about 30 minutes give or take I think it was about 30 minutes and um, and at the time I was like that was amazing like it was the first time I'd ever been in a helicopter and I was like that was incredible that was amazing it was so much fun now I nearly tore my poor friend Jenny's hand off because I was like like kind of grip of death on her because it was just a bit scary um but it was incredible and it was like a view of New York I had never had before um so it was really cool and at the time I was like you know what well worth the money now having done the helicopter tour in Vegas which was about only about two months ago the helicopter tour in New York seems a little expensive for what you get because it's shorter, it doesn't take up a lot of your day, to be honest. You can just go down to Wall Street at your assigned time, go do it, and like go meet everyone else for lunch afterwards because some people didn't do it. Um, so yeah, that's a pro, I guess. Um, but it's also a lot of money to be spending considering you're only in the helicopter for like 20 minutes. I can't remember the company we went with with New York, but for Vegas we went with a company called Papillon, which is um, French for butterfly. It's nearly like a whole day thing, to be honest. So we um, were collected from our hotel, I wanna say about one o'clock. And you're driven like an hour outside of Vegas and you get to um this this area where they have like their all their helicopters and stuff um and you know you watch the safety video and you're way all told we were in the air for over an hour um and we flew over the hoover dam we flew over the grand canyon we were originally going to do the helicopter tour in vegas where you land in the canyon you know you have lunch or champagne or whatever in the canyon and then you get back into the helicopter and go back i'm actually glad we didn't do that one for the day that it was because the day that it was it was quite windy and i more or less said to my friend jenny when we landed like i wouldn't i would have got to the canyon got out for food and whatever and like not wanted to get back in the helicopter my friend jenny again was with me my helicopter buddy and she actually thought i was hating it because i was very nervous when it was like you know it was suddenly go boom and like you know that feeling where your stomach like goes into your legs and you're like i'm gonna be sick this helicopter company played music into your headphones and it's like lined up with what the experience and it was like it made me so emotional like I was like this is like one of the most spectacular natural landscapes in the world and we're flying over it in this tiny little dot of an airplane it was incredible like so when I compare the two for me there is literally no comparison the Vegas one wins hands down our pilot Doro was unbelievable oh my gosh i mean it was just 
one of the most amazing things I've ever done. So I'm not saying if you're ever in New York, don't do the helicopter tour, like definitely do it. But if you know, if you happen to be doing Vegas and New York or something, prioritize the helicopter tour in Vegas. I cannot recommend it enough. And Papillon and Doro, incredible. Okay, temples in Cambodia. My aunt has been to Cambodia before to see Reap and she was like, you have to do Angkor Wat at sunrise like unbelievable one of the most incredible things ever and I was like okay cool so I arrived in my hostel and I was like I want to do it the next day I think it was about 45 euro but that was literally for a driver for the day tuk tuk for the day we tipped them as well I can't remember how much it is for the for the passes oh yeah so uh, for one day it's 37 dollars um, for three days it's $62 and for seven days it's $72. So you definitely get more bang for your buck for the seven day. I convinced two other people um, to do it with me. We were all solo travelers so it was kind of perfect. Um, and so we got up the next morning at crazy o'clock which was 4 a.m. Um, to go get our temple passes to go to Angkor Wat. I think mistake number one is not having your temple pass the night before. Because the thing with Angkor Wat is, it's not original to go to it at sunrise. It, like, really isn't. So, if you're going to get your pass that morning, and you're arriving to Angkor Wat, there are people who have already had their passes, and they haven't had to queue up to get the pass, and so they're already, like, front row and center, cameras, tripods, the whole lot set up, ready to see the sunrise. The thing about sunrise in Angkor Wat is, you may get a dud sunrise. That's just a fact. You might get a sunrise that is not spectacular, and um, it may be a really cloudy morning, and it may look kind of crap, or kind of average. And that's kind of what I got, to be perfectly honest. It was not a spectacular, life-changing sunrise over this temple kind of thing. It was, cloudy and hard to make out Angkor Wat and I actually so I have a photo of it um, and I'm not normally one for like doing massive amounts of filtering um, to my photos because sometimes people just over filter things and they look crap let's be honest but this one I actually had to filter it so that you could see the outline of Angkor Wat. There's something about just like getting up and seizing the day and just being like okay let's go, let's get this done, let's see these things, because like I'm excited about it. And then being able to like come back and just like chill, which is totally worth it. Um, but I think you just need to prepare yourself for the fact that the sunrise might be shitty. It might be. And then you're like, why did I get up at 4 a.m.? Zip lining in Costa Rica. Um, so, where were we in Costa Rica? I can't remember. It's times like these that I'm very glad I have a blog because otherwise I would not remember anything. We went to a couple of different places in Costa Rica, um, but one of the places we went to was Monteverde, which is very much like up, up in the mountains. If you are going to Costa Rica expecting sun and blue skies and just magical tropicalness, um, yeah, not so much up in the mountains, certainly not in January. It was cold, it was rainy, like like we're talking torrential rain. Really windy, not ideal conditions for ziplining to be perfectly honest. So I ziplined before in Ireland um, and I enjoy it, I think it's, I think it's kind of good fun. Um, but this one in Monteverde in Costa Rica it, they say their Superman one is the longest zip line in Latin America. This was about uh, 50 euro. We did the zip lining with 100% um, Aventura tours. Um, so longest zip line in Latin America measuring 1,590 meters. This was on another level, okay? So first you did like your regular zip lining, which is like, you know, you're sitting kind of upright, sitting into the seat. And there was a couple of short ones to start. And then there was a really long one. But the big one, the like, the scary one, the 1,590 meter one is the Superman. 
So the difference between the Superman and regular zip lining is the regular zip line, your zip line comes down and it's connected to your stomach and you're kind of sitting into it. Superman, the connections are on your back. So there's one kind of higher on your back and one lower on your back and you are flat, face down. The connections are up here and the wire is up here. So when you're face down, you can't, you can't really see the wire. Because it was such a wet and windy, foggy, misty, gross day, you could see the wire to a point and then it just like disappeared into the mist. So you're lying face down on this board with two people holding your leg. You're attached <laughs> to a harness by your back. You can't see that it's properly attached. You're just like, fingers crossed. And you lift your head to see the wire and you can't. We were ziplining um, over a valley basically and it was really high up. Like these trees are super tall and I was so high above them, they were like little dots. Everyone was like, you can do it, you can do it. Cause of course I was the first one of my group to do it. Cause I was like, I have ziplined before, I have fine. Ugh. But then I was like, okay, 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 go. And they, they like push you forward. And I just like screamed the whole way across. It was one of the, scariest but most amazing things I've ever done in my life. I felt like a bird and I know that's like so cliche but I did. I honestly felt like a bird. It was in insane. Yeah it was so cool. Do it, do it, do it, do it. On to less heart racing situations. I have fallen completely and utterly head over heels in love with Vietnamese food. It is so fresh and so fragrant and so like packed with flavor like oh my gosh i love vietnamese food so when i was in hoi an which is um south in vietnam um we were talking about going and doing a cooking class and i was like yes let's do it we looked a couple of places up i did it with th time oh who did i do it with oh i'm not even going to try and pronounce it yeah Huan Tin, Huan Tin cooking class. I'll link it down below. First things first, you go to the market. And if you've ever been to a Vietnamese market, you will know that they are incredibly intimidating, um, for one, because you don't speak Vietnamese, but also because there is so much to see there and so much incredible produce that you don't even know where to start. And that's why it's so intimidating, because you're like, I don't know what this is but it smells and looks good so I want it so it was great to get to go with you know someone who's from Vietnam who speaks Vietnamese um, and who was able to kind of bring us through everything so when we went to the market we were kind of split into groups and we all had baskets and basically what we would do is she would go and show us like here's how we know this is fresh here's how we choose these things here's these different um herbs your equivalent at home would be x y and z like really really interesting because she was like if you don't have this at home this vegetable what you can use instead is this and add like this spice in and you'll get the same effect like so so interesting and then after that we got a boat tour down to where we were doing our our cooking and it was like one of the best days i had in vietnam because it was just it was so wonderful. It was so nice. Our instructor was incredible. The food we made, like I, I, we brought all the recipes home. I have them somewhere at home. And like we made um, fresh spring rolls. We made pho. Um, we made, uh, what was that thing we made? We made like a beef salad. We made so much good stuff. Like the food was amazing. I uh, met really, really nice people in my group. And it's just given me such an appreciation for Vietnamese food and like the, the work that goes into it. It's such an enjoyable day to just really immerse yourself in a culture. For me as somebody who enjoys food so much, um, just getting to spend a day like totally immersed in Vietnamese food and the culture was amazing and I would highly recommend doing it and it wasn't expensive I want to say it was around the 40 or 50 dollar mark but like for the amount of food we made for all the information we got for the day we had like I would do it any day of the week so sticking with Vietnam for a second uh when I was in Hanoi you can do a day trip to Halong Bay from Hanoi 
and um, so I did it with Vietnam Backpackers Hostel. So you're picked up in the morning and you were brought to Ha Long Bay. So it's it's quite a drive. It's about an hour and a half, two hours out to Ha Long Bay. And then you get on your boat and you go around the bay and you have food and you're brought back and you and you uh, get your bus back. That whole experience was a bit of a weird day for me. So there's a couple of factors that made me not enjoy it probably as much as I could have. The bus was late picking me up to the point that I actually thought like, oh, I'm not going to get to go on this. And when I did get picked up, they were like, oh, we're just collecting you. We're going to change you to a different bus at a halfway point. And I was like, excuse me? So I got on the bus because I was like, I don't know what else to do. And we stopped at like a petrol station and I got onto a new bus. It just felt a bit shady to me. So I was like a little uncomfortable with that. Um, the driving in Vietnam is insane. Nothing short of crazy. So that made me very nervous because I was literally sitting in front like behind the driver and like watching him eke out and seeing that there was like an articulated lorry coming towards us and he'd be like no I got time so he'd like go into the wrong lane and like switch back in as the truck would like pass us. So that made me nauseous like two hours of that I was like oh my god I feel sick. So we got to the like port um, and got on our boat and like we had a really really nice lunch and there was like crab and there was loads of amazing food it was really good food and the views of Halong Bay were incredible like Halong Bay is stunning it really is and I would definitely recommend going there and doing it and seeing it um, because it is it is magnificent. You can get into a little kind of smaller boat bucket thing and someone will will bring you inside a kind of a cave area and out again, which is nice. Uh, very touristy again, like it was a 10 minute thing and you're you're out and you're back on your ferry. Um, but it was, it was good, it was nice to see. And then we also toured a cave that had only been found in like the last 20 years or something. That was really cool to see. It was quite an intense cave, a lot of steps and stuff, um, but really, really nice to see. And then got back on our boat and then had the trip back. So it is like a full day trip. We got back so late. And I think one of the things that kind of ruined it for me is that we were, we were brought back and we stopped at like this stopover place and we were literally there for an hour and they were washing the buses for some reason and I was like why are we washing the buses we still have like another hour and a bit until we're back in Hanoi and no one had any answers everyone like every tourist was getting like really annoyed because at this stage it was probably about 9 p.m everyone just kind of wanted to be back but the whole experience I think it was about $60 probably if I could do it again I would do Halong Bay overnight I know another girl I met when I was traveling had done an overnight thing I think she maybe done three nights and she loved it she said it was incredible so I think the day tour is maybe a little bit intense to be honest and um, it's a lot in a day it's beautiful definitely worth seeing but I think a day tour is probably just a bit fast Okay, I wasn't going to include this one because my experience is tainted by alcohol. <laughs> but I'm going to include it anyway. You may know I did like a, a Central American tour with Intrepid Travel. When we got to Granada, they were like, oh, you should definitely do this tour. It's this one day tour. They bring you around Granada. Um, we have lunch in like this country club and you get to like, you know, do all this different stuff and um, and then there's a volcano tour at night so we're like okay we'll do it that's fine it was an incredible tour so we did the no rush tour so it's an all-day tour of Granada which brings you on a bus around the city to the markets a boat tour a trip to a hotel resort for lunch and water activities on a lake in the middle of a crater yes <laughs> there's a crater and there's just a lake in it now it's so strange and a nighttime visit to the volcano our tour guide was amazing so we got picked up that day we got you know a bit of a historical tour around Granada we went to these markets and um, and then we went to the hotel resort with the the lake crater thing going on for lunch and our tour guide makes this rum punch and it tasted so like juice and we all had one and we were like this is fine it's juice we're good you have to drive to the volcano and there's like a queue to get into this volcano park at night and like it gets dark kind of early there so our bus driver has uh, had a karaoke machine and continued to give out rum punch and let me tell you <laughs> that rum punch hits you hard 
really, really hard. I'll be honest, by the time... <laughs> by the time we got to like into the volcano park I was pretty gone like I was pretty drunk from rum punch it's all very fuzzy for me to be perfectly honest like I remember looking at me like is that it like because it was like this glow but because it was kind of far away because obviously they don't want you standing like at the edge of this volcano and um, and yeah I just basically remember being very hyper at the top of this volcano and just like running around and seeing gold digger by Kanye West don't know why. They gonna be. Oh, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> that looks official. Did you just break it? <laughs> Oh so I definitely would recommend it but just go easy with the rum punch and that was in reviews so at least I knew, knew I wasn't like the first person burned by it but man it hits you hard it really does dune buggies in Dubai another like bizarre experience and um, so my friend had been to Dubai before and she was like oh you have to do the dune buggies it's really good fun and I was like, okay. Now she had done it with this girl that she knew. Um, I was I was by myself. Um, so that's one thing about like these tours by yourself. Uh, you can be in a car with like a family or a group of friends, and like unfortunately, I got in a car. Um, the car I was in for the Dune Boogie experience. Um none of them spoke English, I didn't speak their language, uh, so it can make it kind of a little bit isolating um, in that case. And this was cheap, this was $40. Now I did find a discount code, so what I did was I researched dune buggy, like day outs or safari experience, dune safari experiences in Dubai, and this one came up and yeah, it was $40 for pretty much the full day, so I was collected from my hotel at noon and you drive way out of Dubai, probably an hour out of Dubai, and then you stop and like the convoy kind of gathers. So there was probably about 15 cars in our convoy and like a lot of the drivers are like letting air out of their wheels and all this kind of stuff. I guess it makes it easier to drive on that terrain. Um, and then in a convoy, you all go and do the doom buggy bit. And it is very intense. Like if you're a nervous passenger, like I can sometimes be, like I'm not nervous in like regular, like driving through cities or anything like that, but I get nervous on like windy roads. So you can imagine I was like petrified in this thing. Uh, there's moments where like my hands are, I'm like white knuckling the side because you're literally like, you're on these dunes and you're kind of sliding down them and, it's just so bizarre. It's really weird, but it's it like if you're a bit of an adrenaline junkie, I think you'd enjoy it. I actually did really enjoy it, um, but it just took me a while. This area out in the middle of the desert, where there was like you could go for camel rides and you could um, take out like the smaller like go kart buggies yourself, and then inside there was like a stage and you get your food, and um, so they were having like this big Middle Eastern barbecue. The food was incredible it was so so good um and you could get like henna done and all that kind of stuff and so i was just like wandering around by myself because none of my tables spoke english they were really nice to like save me a seat and stuff so then we were going up to the buffet we were going to get food and i bumped into uh, these two women from england and they were so so nice one was part of a couple another was another solo traveler and they had also met this american guy so we went and sat together i felt a bit bad for ditching my uh, my adopted family but we hadn't said a word to each other it was just getting a bit awkward so then i had dinner with them like watched the show together and all that kind of stuff yeah it was it was like it's a cool experience it's a cool cool one day thing to do and especially because like you have the show so they had like you know the dancers and like guys doing stuff with flames and a guy who like spun for about seven minutes so I definitely would recommend that experience but I really feel like you you can feel a bit isolated if it's just you by yourself had I not found those other people later like I literally would have gone the whole day without speaking a word to someone which is weird so you know either do it with a friend or maybe find another solo traveler or you know when you get there just try and find people who speak whatever language it is that you speak um because it can just be a little bit isolating like a full day otherwise that was my uh my my doom buggy experience very cool very scary but very cool but scary I don't know if I'm like putting people off these things or 
encouraging them to do it I'm not sure so I was in Australia around this time last year almost this time last year and in my first week I was going to visit really good friends of mine and um, love them to pieces and my friend Sarah had organized a surprise trip for her boyfriend at uh, and uh, I was basically going to come along. The big surprise was that we were going to Hamilton Island um, and I had helped kind of in the run up uh, to going on the trip find like this uh, trip that we could do a one day trip um, which was you went out so you were, we were on Hamilton Island you went out on a catamaran for the day uh, there was like lunch you could go to like Whithaven and we were going to do snorkeling I didn't really know what to expect because I, I used to be a really good swimmer but I haven't really swam a lot in like I'd say the last 10 years I went out with like one of the um tubes just kind of around my waist just for just for my own comfort and so yeah we went snorkeling in um uh just off the coast of like this little island and it was like it was my first experience snorkeling and I was like oh my god like the coral obviously we didn't touch the coral go near it but like you could see the coral you could see the fish like it was just it was amazing and I was like blown away I just thought it was the most incredible thing I'd ever done but then I went to Belize like maybe two months later like it's one of the one of the best places in the world and it has the second largest reef in the world I had been in Belize like probably two days at this stage and I was just kind of like hanging out like chilling at the beach and um, just very much like doing nothing and kind of enjoying it just blazing basically but then I was like no I really want to do something so there's a lot of different companies in Key Coker where you can do your snorkeling so I really didn't know who to go with looked it up online and eventually decided to go with Man Cave Tours if you haven't been to Key Coker it is a fun place to go out and everyone goes to this one sports bar I'm, I'm diverting a little bit from the main part of the story but Suffice to say, I was hungover going on this snorkeling trip the next day. I'm not coming out of these stories very well, but here we are. And this one guy was like helping me organize all my stuff and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm a little bit hungover. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, don't worry, we'll take good care of you. And um, so he was really nice. His name was Ronnie and he was like the captain and he took me on his boat and he was like, I'll keep an eye on you. I wore a life jacket for the whole thing because it was a whole day thing. And I was like, I am not gonna tire myself. I snorkeling like I'm gonna just I'm gonna chill out when I compare the two experiences Belize versus Australia like Belize wins hands down there's a couple of reasons for this my Australian trip where we were at Hamilton Island there had been a typhoon uh, a couple of months before and we were warned that the visibility was going to be low because there was still a lot of disturbance in the sand and that kind of thing and things hadn't fully settled back down and um, so that's why the visibility was really really low and even on the boat it had been an incredible experience for me but a lot of other people on the catamaran were saying you know if you go more out into the the reef proper and um, the visibility is way better and it's a much better experience also there was really only one opportunity to snorkel um on the australian trip uh, whereas we were we probably got in the water six times i'd say everyone else was seven in belize another reason i preferred the belize trip is that i saw so much I felt like I was in Finding Dory. I saw like turtles, I saw baby sharks, I like swam with baby sharks and turtles. We swam with a manatee, which was just like mind blowing. Um, stingrays, like everything. We saw everything. The footage I have on my GoPro it doesn't even slightly do it justice because the visibility was it was crystal clear and I could see everything and there were turtles swimming under me and there were sharks beside me and then we found a manatee and it was just mind-blowing our captain Ronnie was incredible so we went out and we saw like you know like kind of a shipwreck and we uh fed the nurse sharks and we he came down in the water with us the first time and like pointed out all these different types of fish and the coral and in the Australian one I didn't see any of that I saw like big fish and colorful fish and all that kind of stuff but I didn't see anything that like I recognized like I would a turtle or like I would a stingray or anything like that and um, so it was just another level of an experience and Belize's 
definitely somewhere I would highly recommend for people to go. For me, those two experiences, when you weigh them up, Australia was incredible because I was with friends that I hadn't seen in like a year and a half. We were on this stunning catamaran, like it was like my second or third day in Australia, like it was incredible. Um, but if, if we're just comparing like the actual snorkeling experience, then Belize wins out for sure. So that is it for this video. That's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I tried to give my honest review of all these experiences because I know some of them are really, really expensive and you don't want to spend all this money on something that you're not going to enjoy. Uh, so I really hope this has helped you guys in some ways. I would love to also hear about some of your travel experiences and whether you find them worth them or not. So please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, then please give it a big thumbs up and you can also subscribe down below if you would like to see more videos from me and other than that I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, I'm getting glass all over this. Sorry, my nose is really itchy. I still I'm not well. Where are we? What are we doing now? I have not been able to oh good I've run out of tissues. Oh no come back. Sorry. Ooh, sorry I have to organize myself. Let's see. Sally, was it Granada or Leon? I think it was Granada. My camera died and then my memory card ran out of memory and then my coffee went cold. So we just had to regroup for a little while.